Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video, we're going to discuss some of the recent discoveries coming out of incredible radio telescopes in Australia and in South Africa that essentially present us with a lot of somewhat bizarre and somewhat mysterious circular discoveries. In other words, various radio circles. Some kind of expected, and some somewhat easy to explain, but some really strange ones, like this almost perfect circle, that was recently discovered in one of the surveys, and some connected to a very big mystery referred to as orcs, odd radio circles, very strange massive formations discovered in certain locations that we now potentially can explain. And so let's discuss this in a little bit more detail, but first let's start with how this was discovered and why studying this is kind of important. And well, in essence, this is a combination of two major telescopes. ASCAP, also known as the Australian Square Kilometer Array Pathfinder, located in Western Australia, and Meerkat Radio Telescope, located in South Africa. Two extremely powerful radio facilities, capable of seeing the universe in pure radio frequencies, or essentially revealing the universe in a way we've never seen it before. Mostly because both of these telescopes are extremely sensitive and helped us reveal very dim objects that were previously completely invisible. Although here I guess it's also important to understand exactly what we're talking about when we talk about radio frequencies and radio universe. There's a link in the description that helps you visualize all of this, but this is a website known as Glimoscope. And well, in essence, if you have any optical telescope, by looking at the night skies, you're going to see something like this. But as you might be aware, we have several telescopes, including space telescopes, that focus on very different frequencies. For example, for an X-ray telescope, the view will change completely. And for a gamma ray telescope, everything looks entirely different as well. Not so long ago, we've actually discussed one of the biggest gamma ray maps ever created that was only released a few months back. I think there's a video in the description discussing this more. Then we have the infrared. This is the domain of telescopes like WISE or the now famous James Webb Space Telescope. But the universe transforms dramatically once you start approaching much longer wavelengths such as microwave or radio light. And well, when it comes to radio frequencies, things become extremely different. Because in many cases, a lot of radio sources contain very unique physical properties and physical features that cannot be seen in any other light. Now, one famous example I like to use is the nearby Centaurus A galaxy. Here's what this galaxy looks like in radio light, but here's what this galaxy looks like in the optical light. It's practically invisible. But here's what it looks like if you combine all of the frequencies into one single image. And so despite this image being really famous, it's actually not something our eyes can see at all. This is a combination of radio light, optical, infrared, and even x-rays. But when it comes to radio frequencies, a lot of these telescopes have been participating in various surveys in order to basically map the entire universe to help us understand what's going on out there. And once again, because we just don't really see the same objects with the radio light compared to everything else. With one of these very large surveys known as EMU, Evolutionary Map of the Universe a really large program whose main purpose is to map the entire southern sky in order to create the biggest possible radio map we've ever seen of the entire southern hemisphere. And so many of these new discoveries actually come from this survey, with many of them from different locations and at different distances. And so in one of the recent articles you can find in the description, scientists discuss some of these unusual circular formations because they seem to be ubiquitous, they seem to be pretty much everywhere, but they all come in different sizes and obviously at different distances. And here's one such study discussing a never before seen ring-like object from right here in the Milky Way, currently referred to as Kuklos. You can actually see this object right here on the left, and though at first it wasn't clear what this was, it turned out to be a star that one day will go supernova. And so this somewhat strange radio ring that does resemble a lot of other radio circles actually seems to be right here in the Milky Way galaxy, because it also seems to contain a lot of different features we usually detect around wolf Freya stars. Some of the most massive and some of the brightest stars in the entire universe that are extremely close to going supernova, mostly because they're now so unstable that they're throwing out huge amounts of gas as they enter the final stages of their life cycle. And we usually detect a lot of nebula around these objects, and they're usually bright enough and powerful enough to be visible from a different galaxy too. Here's one in the Large Magellanic Clouds. But as you can see, they also generally form circular features, which in this case are visible in both of these objects. Kiklos and WR16 both form relatively large radio circles in the night skies. And one of the main reasons we see them is because a lot of gas escaping these stars has now basically cleared the environment around the stars 
forming these circular symmetrical objects. But surprisingly, they actually look very similar to something entirely different. In this case, supernova. Because a lot of supernova are also kind of circular and will very often possess very similar shapes. And so in some cases, these radio circles can also be formed by various star remnants, but in many cases, they will usually contain some kind of a deformation. And in this case, it's because sometimes there's just a bunch of gas around these stars, and so when the supernova happens and the gas from the star starts to explode away from the center, one of its sides can occasionally slam into interstellar gas, producing additional radio emissions. And so quite a lot of them basically look kind of like this. But in some rare cases, if there's no interstellar gas around the supernova, we can actually end up with some super bizarre objects. And that's basically what you see right here. This is an object now referred to as teleos, which is Greek for perfect. An almost perfectly circular shape that, though very surprising at first, did turn out to be a supernova remnant once again, but was strangely enough invisible in other wavelengths. In other words, we now know it's a remnant, but it was originally discovered by looking at radio light. But in some other cases, a supernova can also happen in an extremely turbulent region, and at the same time can also be extremely large, probably because the explosion was very powerful. Which is where we get this object. Now because this was discovered by ASCAP, it once again has a somewhat strange Australian name, but here it's now referred to as Diprotodon, or I guess Diprotodon supernova. This is the largest supernova remnant ever seen, and in this case, if we could see this object, as in we could see it with our own eyes, it would be six times larger than the moon. But once again, only visible in radio light. You can learn more about this object in one of the studies in the description, but in essence, this recent study confirms the distance and confirms that this object is way larger than we ever thought. It's approximately 500 light years across. So definitely something that goes beyond our expectations. With some of the other circular objects visible in the Milky Way being various types of nebula. For example, VDB 80 is essentially what's known as a reflection nebula. It actually looks like this in the optical light, but because certain types of gas, such as ionized hydrogen, tends to produce certain radio emissions, some of the light from various stars can also push the hydrogen, forming a kind of a circular shape. Which is what happens here, with this object now referred to as Legotis, once again named after an Australian animal. But in most cases, these circles in the Milky Way are not actually that difficult to explain. Yet we do sometimes find circles that appear to be much, much farther away, and thus seem to be the result of different galaxies. And while one type of new galaxy is discovered by ASCAP and Meerkat are known as radio ring galaxies. A bizarre type of galaxies that seem to contain a hole in the middle, but only when seen in radio light. If you look at these objects in optical light, they normally appear as normal disk galaxies and don't actually appear to have anything different. And so what exactly happened here? Well, right now the only explanation we have is that, once upon a time, there must have been some kind of a super active period with maybe a lot of supernova exploding around the same time that created so much force that a lot of gas from this galaxy was basically pushed to the outskirts, forming a ring with an empty circle in the middle. Or at least that's one of the explanations we have for now. This is a new discovery, so there is still a lot of uncertainty. And then we come to the most mysterious circle of the mole, Orc. This is the odd radio circle. You can actually learn more about this in some of the videos in the description, but this is basically a type of an object only discovered five years ago, and that even now doesn't actually have a very good explanation. Because in many cases, these radio circles only sometimes have something in the middle, usually some kind of a galaxy, but sometimes have nothing in the middle. But more importantly, in most cases, these are the largest circles out there, hundreds of thousands if not millions of light years across. And though the explanation for some of them involves some kind of a major emission from some kind of a galaxy out there, this doesn't obviously apply to all of them, because there is not always a galaxy in the middle. But one of the main reasons they are so difficult to explain is really because they seem to be only visible in radio light. A lot of other objects like the supernova remnants or the nebula they are visible in additional frequencies. Here though, there seems to be nothing else. No optical emissions, no x-rays, no infrared, nothing. And so even if this is some kind of a galactic explosion, it's difficult to explain that we're seeing nothing else. As a matter of fact, a few months back, there was another one discovered that you can see right here. And once again, super difficult to explain. But using simulations and various theoretical models, scientists believe that there might be one way to explain all of them, assuming we can prove there is some kind of a radio galaxy nearby. And here we're talking about a galaxy like this, a galaxy that's able to produce enormous radio jets, 
very often stretching for over a million of light years away from the central black hole. And the explanation here focuses on the perspective. Or in other words, what if there is a radio galaxy somewhere out there, but it's essentially shooting these jets at us, kind of like a quasar or a blazer, but we only see radio light as a result. And to prove this point, researchers conducted additional simulations, trying to see if they can maybe create something similar by using a modeling software. And strangely enough, they were able to recreate at least two of these objects with extremely similar features. With the main explanation basically being a lot of fast-moving particles smashing into intergalactic gas that produce electrons and positrons, which emit radio light visible right here. And so by seeing these jets almost face on, they might appear as these very bright radio circles. And more importantly, the predicted bubbles here seem to appear just as big as the real ones. Here the size is over a million light years across. But then there's I guess one question, why are we only seeing a handful and not more of them? Because radio galaxies are actually pretty common and at least some of them should be pointing their jets directly at us. And well, there's maybe one explanation coming from the study. There seems to be some kind of a critical factor involving the amount of gas around this galaxy. If a radio galaxy is located in a somewhat dense region containing a lot of intercluster gas, the jet might be blocked completely. But in a cluster containing low mass and also containing less gas, the jets might be easily visible, which is surprisingly why we seem to be seeing orcs in these low mass clusters. And so essentially jets seem to be only visible when they're able to displace the gas located around the galaxy. But the study also predicts that, technically, we should be seeing some of this gas in the X-rays. In other words, these orcs should also be producing X-rays visible to various telescopes such as Chandra. But because it's not actually that bright, it would actually take up to two weeks to observe this, which just has not been done yet. And so in order to confirm this hypothesis, researchers just need to conduct additional X-ray observations to see if orcs also produce X-rays. And so until that's done, it's just going to remain a mystery and one of the most unexplored and unexplained astronomical questions of the last decade. But all in all, in just the last five years, so many incredible radio discoveries have been made by these telescopes, and so many new objects have been found that we never knew existed. You can find some of these videos in the description, but in essence, this is, as I mentioned before, the golden age of radio astronomy. We're going to be discovering more and more of these objects as more studies are conducted, and these somewhat outdated and somewhat simple radio maps we used to have are going to become extremely detailed and covered in objects we never knew existed. And that's because even like three years ago, ASCAP already discovered millions of different objects in just a few months of its operation. And so in the next few years, we'll most likely be seeing the results with this new radio map being mind-blowing. And so until these future updates, that's kind of all I wanted to mention. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.